Welcome, my friends, to another LHB topical discussion. What is the image of the beast? Is the image of the beast going to be a tattoo, a robot, a statue that's miraculously, miraculously talking, that Satan gives power to? What is this image of the beast? Well, I believe that the image of the beast is exactly that. It's going to be an image, a holographic image. We have the technology to do that today. We're going to be taking a, a look at a couple of clips uh, illustrating how this is very much possible. Let's read the verse in Revelation chapter 13. Now, here's the context of it. It's talking about the first beast that comes out of the sea or sea of humanity, this political system. We know this first beast as the Antichrist, but the Antichrist will have a partner in crime. His name is the false prophet, most likely a pope of some kind that will unify all religions. So the Antichrist will have the political system unified while the false prophet will have all the religious systems unified in this hybrid uh, new age religion, right? Under the banner of the Catholic Church. We can see that happening today already. Now, this second beast is who we're going to be focusing on um, and what he uh, institutes, which we call the image of the beast, right? So in Revelation chapter 13, it says this, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. Now, he had two horns like a lamb, right? And he spoke as a dragon. The lamb identifies him with the lamb of God or Jesus Christ. That's why we know it's a it's a false Christianity that we're going to be seeing. Not from Islam, not from any other religion, but someone who's identified with the lamb of God. But he speaks like a dragon. The dragon in Revelation is indicated as Satan. So he looks like a Christian, but he speaks like a devil is what it's saying. Verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. So he's going to cause all to worship the Antichrist. And he doth great wonders, so that he make fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. He's going to do great miracles. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Now check this out. An image is what we're going to be focused on. Verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, very specific right hand, or in their forehead, okay? And that no man might buy or sell, save he, he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. So I personally believe that the image is going to be some kind of holographic image, and the clips you're going to see now kind of backs up that view. The Bible is accurate all the time. It tells us future things, and only God who is outside of time can tell us the days that we're living in today and all the technology that would be here to produce uh, uh, these uh, outstanding prophecies that we're, we're living, okay? So without further ado, my friends, look at these two clips, and as always, watch through the lens of Scripture. Until next time, God bless. Our redemption draws near. Maranatha. <laughs> I thank the candidate at Izmir Town Hall. For 11 years, my dear friend was Minister of Transport, and it is thanks to him that this meeting took place, and I thank him for making it possible to meet you using this hologram. I thank him very much. think about digital humans and if we're doing our job right you don't necessarily notice their existence uh, movies like um, curious case of Benjamin Button we were very proud to have the elder Brad Pitt not recognized as a digital character for uh, many many months after the film and 
But over time, with breakout performances like Tupac at Coachella or Michael Jackson at the Billboard Music Awards, um, you know, the digital human has really arrived in a much stronger way and created new forms of entertainment that, uh, frankly, we didn't even anticipate. My name is Jack Leroy Wilson Jr. You know me as Jackie Wilson. I never liked Jack. Do I look like a girl to you? You're about to see something amazing. What we do is, uh, it's a patented technique. It's the same technology that did Tupac at Coachella, right? Uh, it's a 200 year old uh, technique using 21st century uh, technologies. It's really not 3D, it's a two dimensional image that's projected in a specific way using angled reflective material that is invisible and high powered projectors or high powered LEDs that is projecting video uh, with black backgrounds that gives the illusion that you're looking at a live person standing on a stage in a three-dimensional space. We're about the content. Uh, we're agnostic as to the display technology. If we're building a digital human, hyper-realistic character like the Curious Case of Benjamin Button or, or Michael Jackson or uh, projects that we've been talking about like the um, ABBA, for example, um, whether those characters end up in film, in music videos, in print, Imagine you now have unlimited new inventory of uh, imagery of uh, Marilyn Monroe. Uh, the world is really used to seeing the same 30 photographs of her. Well, now you can see uh, many, many more. All the content that we create, whether it's taking old footage and wrapping it in a matrix-like image or a video presentation, or in fact life-size or larger than life-size images of living people, animals, 3D models, they're all created in a way so that it can fit the, uh, the Pepper's Ghost illusion. We really use a whole myriad of, uh, of technologies and then when we take the technology and we start uh, streaming it, uh, we then use uh, advanced 360 and VR technologies. So what we're offering is, is that we're offering um, a live experience. I, I think we can, we can get excited about the holographic technology, but we have to make sure that we don't put the tech in front of the content. Um, some of the best projects we've ever worked on in the visual effects space, if we're doing our job right, people aren't thinking about the tech as they're enjoying the content. I think the entertainers that we've picked are all the leaders within their respective areas. and. Uh, you know, it's also the partnerships that we've built with, with their rights holders. Um, and taking that and seeing what we can do as a partnership collectively together, not just, you know, one-sided. You know, if, if you look at sort of our history, uh, the people of Pulse in leadership and the digital artists especially, um, you know, we've been lucky and accomplished enough to have developed the most believable digital humans in history. The future of the technology, I would say, comes in the evolution of the supporting technologies. You know, ultimately, in, in terms of making this a viable technology for the consumer to enjoy or for businesses to enjoy, it has to be scalable and it has to be cost effective.